Assalamu alaikum welcome back to the new vlog today we have a training of the pre anesthetic talks and the dental procedures so i will try my best to make the videos of the uh, practical class if i will make the video then i will share with you and uh, uh, so let's start the trip probably it's not the correct way you will not find it in a textbook but this is how i do it and i have never had a problem so there's two ways so you can use this will be hard in this guy cuz he's still a little bit solid so half the width of the tongue Okay, so you know the divide that comes down the middle? Okay. Roughly, if your tube circumference is half the width of this tongue, nine times out of ten you'll have the correct size tube. Okay, this obviously doesn't apply to brachy, brachycephalic patients. So your French bulldogs, your bull, um, British bulldogs, occasionally Persians, because their tongues are bigger than their mouth. So obviously their anatomy is really bad, their trachea is actually a lot smaller. There's not enough space for everything there. Okay, so it doesn't that rule doesn't apply to bulldogs or any any snub nose dog. Okay, so as a rule of thumb, this is going to be too small as you can see. Okay, so if you just measure it like that, we'd probably this dog could easily probably take a ten and a half and an eleven. Okay, so it needs to be as snug as possible down the the trachea. Okay, so roughly as a rule of thumb, if you're in an emergency, as long as you've got roughly half the width of the tongue, you're good to go. Okay. Another way that my colleague uses, which she swears by, again, is the, the yeah. half the width of the nose. So it's another way to, to measure. So it's basically the septum here. I don't know if you guys can see, sorry. It's a bit bloody. Shame, poor little dog. So roughly half the width, okay. Usually use a five ml syringe with these bigger tubes. But that's, I've sucked all the air out. So obviously plunger to the top in, just pull as much air out as possible. You can see that's gone in nicely and shrunk up. That's how it should be when you intubate. You don't want any air in that at all because if it's slightly inflated, you could also damage all the tissue going down, especially in cats. Cats are super, super, super sensitive and they, they have laryngeal spasm really easily. A dog you could probably get away with a little bit, but the golden rule is deflate it before you insert, okay? So this will take a while because I have a small syringe, but it's the opposite way. So draw air into your syringe, push in and you twist. So that locks it. So it's better to have a five ml syringe in this case, maybe even a 10. Okay. So you want to push enough air in, not that it's about to explode, but enough that you've got some resistance. So that is airtight essentially, okay? So you never want to intubate any animal. An old giving set, okay? We use these as ties because they're strong and you can get a good knot around the tube. And also if you're doing dentals or surgery around the head, you can sterilize these if you need to. And also they don't absorb water. So it's a little bit drier around the dog's face. So you're not, you don't have a cold bandage wrapped around the dog's nose or around the head. So just for dentals, it's just a little trick and it's, it's nice and tough and you, you use giving sets all the time on patients. You can just cut them up, put them in the sterilization litter tray with, with the e-tubes if you want, obviously after they've been cleaned. It's just a nice, another little trick. Just okay? All right. So. Oh, oh my little doggy. Thank you. Sorry, Maria, I've given you the, he the heaviest job. It's obviously not easy on a frozen mm -hmm. cadaver. So try and get them positioned as much as possible with their head elevated so their neck area is exposed. So all this is open, okay? This is, I can intubate with this. It would be ideal if the shoulders were straight, but the dog is still partially frozen. So index finger and thumb to open, gosh. Yeah, it's fairly. Ah. To open the mouth. <laughs> Please, <love. laughs> Don't you take a picture of me doing this. Okay, so obviously laryngoscope is nice, you have light, and you would just pop, it, pop, pop it to the back of the tongue like this to push it down, and it opens up all that area for, for you to see, okay? So in this case, we pull the tongue as forward as possible. The dog's anesthetized, remember, so it's not gonna feel it. So you can afford to be not aggressive, but a bit more firm than you would be in a clinical examination, okay? Tongue, tongue presser down. So I don't know if you guys can see how much it actually opens up the area just by pushing the tongue down. If you want, we can use light so you can see. 
There we go, that's better. So if you just leave that like that, I mean, again, this, this animal is frozen. It's not showing the yeah, chemical yeah. symptoms, but just pushing that down opens up that space immensely. Okay, and then you can see the palate right at the back. All right. So you literally will put it here, click, and it will crack off. So you don't drag. And you might have to go in separate places and click and crack. And then you use this one, which is, um, I forgot the name now, a subgingival curette. And this is quite sharp on the edge and it's just where you scrape the rest of the tartar off, okay? But usually with like, you know when you, you see these 10 year old Pomeranians, Yorkshire Terriers, they're just caked in tartar. Literally as soon as you touch that, it will fall off. God, it's impossible, I can't see. Contact lenses next time. So yeah, so basically, crack and then release. And you can either use that or you know, that's what you should use to pick it off, okay? Never ever scrape down. It is not always easy. I've often slipped. You know, you've come like that and you've slipped because you haven't got a good enough grip. And the tartar crackers are only ever good for getting really, really deep calculus off. So you know, you see the ones that just have a little bit of staining around the gingiva? They're not gonna get that off. You have to use the manual scraper, okay? And in that case, it's just a case of going with the line of the tooth like this, and just going along all the, oh, we've got a hole there, like that. And that's essentially it, okay? So you can, I mean, that's- sharp? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm have a look. So they have the flat surface here where you can scrape. Yeah. Yep. Millimeters, so, but you can go to three, which is three notches on, on bigger dogs, okay? So that's why these probes are designed with that, that silver gap in the middle, because essentially if your probe goes up further than that, that silver gap, there's an indication that there's a pocket there and you need to explore what's going on, okay? Um, I'm not gonna go into detail about anything further than that, because like I said, this is just a scale and polish lecture, but I just wanted you to go through a basic dental examination, okay? So I think most of you guys know how to probe by the looks of it, so I'm back to front here. But essentially you just rub just under the gingiva, so this is going up to one, point one, sorry. And you just run it all the way along. And it's as simple as that. And it's sometimes you get pockets, especially in these carnassials in older dogs where the there's a bit of exposed bone here, the gingiva's receded up, and then you get a bit of a um, bacteria pocket in there, which can cause issues. Um, and then rub all the way along, okay? Putting in your machines, um, because it's got an antibacterial property. It smells very minty and it's very nice. So when you're scaling, you're getting that antibacterial chlorhexidine up into the gingiva, which helps reduce any inflammation. Um, I shouldn't, we don't sell it. I'm not sure who sells it. I think it's... Um, I think it's Eurovets, which I shouldn't be recommending. But um, yeah, they, they sell it. It's a little green bottle. I think it's called, it's for the IM5 machine, sorry. But it is, it is actually very good. It's very, very good for dentals. Um, just helping get rid of any bacteria and helping with any inflammation on the gum. Okay. So one of the other things to mention is, this obviously heats. That's why we have the water on there to cool the tip. It doesn't need to flood the dog. I come and see dentals and it's like a swimming pool. It's unnecessary and it causes so much time for you guys to do your dental. So just control it. Like this actually, this is probably a little bit too much as well, but I think we had them cleaned, so. So you don't really want any more than that. It's just enough that the tip's moist. Oh, I turned it down a bit too much. So that's more than enough, okay? If you can see it, okay. So, literally, just the side of the probe, okay? Under the gingiva, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five. And the main reason, again, is, is this produces heat. That's the main reason, okay? Huh? Also produces heat. Yes, so yeah, that's the main reason why we don't, we encourage no more than 10 seconds again. So you, I mean, you can do this anyway. You can use your finger and rub polish all on the teeth if you want, or you can just do what I do, which is, get a little bit on. Remember, you don't have to hold this so tight. A lot of people, I, they found they have hand, their hand hurts after this, probably because they're holding it like this, you know, and like pushing so hard. You don't need to push so hard. This, this tip does all the work for you. So it's just gentle, gentle pressure. So no more than like this. This is more than enough. 
Ja. Ja. So it's anything like this down here, like see where it's like, it's bending like that. Yeah. It's, too, it's too much pressure. And then the rubber, the teeth in the middle are actually not doing their job. So you don't need to press so hard with these, okay? What I do is another trick is just feel your tooth before you polish, just so you can feel some of the ridges, okay? And then come and do your tooth. Make sure you focus up above the gingiva, just to buff all that out where your scale has been. And go in little circular motions. Nice and easy. Okay, and you can just do this bit like that. And then just have a feel after. You should be able to, sorry, I probably should have got you to feel that, but you can feel when you scale a tooth, feel the tooth after you scaled, and then polish it after. And this is all about the practical session which we uh, took today. So in the theory, we learned a lot of uh, different pre anesthetic tests. So be sure while, whenever you have a patient of a large age, or the age in the cats more than four years you go for the all test which includes cbc lft rft and other electrolytes calcium test and ultrasonography uh, x-rays and some other specific tests like uh, you can test in the cats for the feline immunodeficiency and feline leukemia virus so these are the basic tests we have to do for every case before going to the surgery because sometime what happen is the patient brought to us after a week or two with the problem of the liver disease in the problem of the kidney disease because the organ is going to be damaged but it's not as damaged as the signs appear on the body of the animals so after the few weeks we get very worse results so please do all the tests of your patients don't rely on the statement of the owner like uh, it's completely normal you have to exam thoroughly uh, before going to start any procedure so this is our training today hope so you enjoy the training we will get back with another vlog thank you so much dr rahman Beg.